Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this gaming rules video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Codenames Duet, published by Czech Games Edition and designed by Vlad Shavatel and Scott Eaton. This video is intended for people who already know how to play the base game of Codenames. So if you don't know how to play Codenames, I would recommend clicking on the little eye up there and watching the other video, as otherwise a lot of this video is not going to make much sense. Now, Codenames Duet is specifically designed for two players, but you can play it with more if you want to. The main difference is that the game is now fully cooperative. All players are working together to find all 15 agents in a limited number of turns. The players sit opposite each other and the words are laid out as normal. Codenames Duet comes with 400 new words, so you can mix them with words from the original game if you wanted to. Place the 15 green agent tiles and the assassin tile near the cards. The nine grey timer tokens with images of bystanders on are placed near the grid. Leave the two blue timer tokens in the box for now. I'll explain those later on. Finally, one of the key cards is placed in the stand somewhere between the two players. Some like to put it by the side, others here or here. What is important though is that the key card is now two-sided and each player should only be able to see their side of the card. On your side of the keycard, nine words are marked in green. These correspond to the agents that you're trying to give clues for. I also have nine agents on my side of the card that I'll give clues for. Now, three of your agents are also agents on my side, and between us we have to find all 15. And we have nine turns to do it in, represented by these timer tokens. When I'm giving clues and you're guessing, it's what's on my side of the grid that matters, not what's on your side, which could be different. You will also notice that there are three assassins on your side of the card, and there's also three assassins on my side too. If I give a clue and you guess one of the words which is an assassin on my side, then we lose immediately, and vice versa. Either one of us can go first, and clues are given just like in regular codenames. Let's say I decide to go first, and I give the clue Egypt 2. You would hopefully guess Cleopatra, which I would mark with an agent because that's what's on my side of the keycard. The fact that it's a bystander on your side doesn't matter. When you place an agent over a word, it can be useful to orient it so that it's facing the player who made the guess. Now, just like in regular codenames, you could stop there if you wanted to. If you do, you end your turn by taking one of the timer tokens and flipping it face down in front of you. And then it would be your turn to give a clue. However, let's say that you decide to have another guess and you select Sphinx. Sphinx is also an agent on my side, so I would cover it again, and then you would probably stop there and take a timer token. But what if you selected Monkey instead for some strange reason? On my side of the card, Monkey is a bystander, so I take one of the tokens and place it on the portrait facing you. This indicates that you know it's a bystander from your point of view, i.e. on my side, but I don't know what it is on your side. It could be a bystander, it could be an agent, or it could be an assassin. And as normal, guessing a bystander ends your turn, so unless you hit an assassin, each turn will use up one timer token. Either it will be placed on a word if you guess a bystander, or it will be placed face down in front of you if you decide to stop guessing. Now, one of the rules changes in Codenames Duet is that you are allowed as many more guesses as you want, no matter what the number said. The plus one rule has been removed and replaced by the fact that you can carry on guessing as long as you get it right. Players take turns giving clues until all 15 agents are found. If at any point someone guesses a word which is an assassin on the other side of the keycard, the game is lost. And when the timer tokens are all gone, the game enters sudden death. No more clues can be given by either side, but now anyone can make as many more guesses as they want, trying to find all the remaining agents using whatever information you have left. If at any point you guess an assassin or a bystander, then you instantly lose the game. If at any point in the game all nine agents on your side of the keycard have been covered by agent cards, you can tell your partner that your side is complete, and from then on you don't give any more clues. And this is the only piece of information you're allowed to share during the game. You're not allowed to say anything else about your side of the keycard even when a word gets covered over. As mentioned earlier, if you guess a word which is a bystander on my side, I take one of the timer tokens and I place it on the card facing you. You would never guess this word again because you know that it's a bystander on my side of the card, but I don't know what it is on your side of the card. It could be an agent, so I may still guess that word on a later turn once you give a clue. 
If, after you have given a clue, I was to guess jail, then because that word is an agent on your side, it gets covered by an agent, but we leave the timer token on it just to remind us. If I was to guess monkey, however, then this is a bystander on your side too, so we'd need to mark the word with a second timer token. We should then move the timer tokens so that they completely cover the word because neither of us will guess it again. Although there are three assassins on each side of the keycard, they are organised in a specific way, and once you understand this, you can use it to your advantage. One of your assassins is also an assassin on my side. One of your assassins is a bystander on my side, and another of your assassins is, wait for it, is an agent on my side. So if we take a look at this grid, on your side, Sherlock, Sphinx and Werewolf are all assassins. So if I guess any of them, we lose. But on my side, Sherlock is an assassin, Werewolf is a bystander, and Sphinx is actually an agent. And remember, because we've got to find all 15 agents, that means at some point in the game, you're going to have to guess Sphinx, even though it's showing as an assassin on your side of the card. Now, here's a helpful tip. If I gave the clue I mentioned earlier of Egypt 2, and you guessed Sphinx, it's covered with an agent. Now, remember what I said about one of your assassins is an agent on my side? Well, you've just found that one. Which means your other two assassins, Sherlock and Werewolf, on my side, one is a bystander and one is an assassin. So you can avoid them for the rest of the game. Clever, eh? Of course, you can't actually say anything about this to me, you've got to keep it secret to yourself. If you manage to win at the standard game, then congratulations! You've just managed to complete the Prague mission on the mission map. You can put a little tick right here. Notice the 9 9 next to Prague. That indicates the nine timer tokens, all of them are face up as I explained earlier on. To choose your next mission, you can continue to any of the cities connected to Prague on this map – Berlin, Cairo or Moscow. The numbers next to the cities are the mission parameters. The first number is how many timer tokens you use, i.e. how many turns you have to complete your mission. If this number is greater than nine, use the additional blue bystanders that I mentioned earlier. The second number is how many of those timer tokens start face up. This represents the number of acceptable mistakes that you can make. For example, if you chose to go to Cairo next, you would use nine timer tokens, but only five of them would be face up. The way that this changes the game is as follows. When you choose to stop guessing, you take one of the tokens with a check mark on and place it in front of you. If there are none of those left, you take one of the tokens with a bystander on, flip it face down and put that in front of you. If you guess a bystander, place one of the bystander side up tokens on the word as you would normally. However, if there are no tokens left showing bystanders, then an incorrect guess is penalised further. Take two of the remaining tokens, flip them both bystander side up, and place them in a stack on the word. It has effectively cost you two turns. As you progress through the map, you'll find that different missions require different strategies. And if you fail a mission, you don't have to start all over again back at the start. Just keep replaying that mission as many times as you want to. It's your mission map and use it in whatever way is the most fun for you. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Codenames Duet. For more of my videos, please subscribe to the channel. And for more great games from CGE, please visit checkgames.com. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.